Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tronage, and today we're going to be talking about a bigger and badder thrust stand that I got from the guys over at RC Benchmark. I'm super excited to crack this open. Stick around. I have a lot of props that I want to get tested. Primarily because being a subscriber of both Drone Drop and Quad Box, it means that I'm going to be getting a lot of props. I get basically two types of props every month, and I've been a subscriber for just under a year now. So that's a lot of props that I've accumulated. What I've been doing is I've been taking each each time I receive a set of props, I take one of them and I set it aside as part of my like test set if you will and the plan is really to just go through sit down and really just test the whole gamut of props that i have versus all the different motors that i have which is considerably a lot of tests let's say for argument's sake let's say that i have like 20 to 30 props and I, let's say i want to test it on like four or five motors you know five motors with 30 props that's like 150 tests so it's a lot of tests that need to be done so i got in touch with the guys over at uh, rc benchmark super helpful asking them for advice um and and just trying to figure out what's the best way to go about this and what's the best way to do these tests and to essentially what should i do basically what we determined was that the thrust end that i had which was the 1520 uh version would work completely fine but it wouldn't capture all of the data, if you will. Primarily, the word that they said that really made me think was torque. When we talk about motors and we talk about lower KVs and bigger props, we're always talking about torquey motors and we're always using this word torque. But not many people I notice when you're looking at profiles of motors and props talk about torque and if i feel like i'm going to talk about motors being torquey or the torque of a motor i probably should have some measurements to back that up and that's why i have in my hand their next step up of thrust stand which is the 1580 when actually what's in this box is the 1585 it's their not yet released upgraded version of the 1580 and really, it just has, I think, a better um, load cell and some better electronic shielding or something. It's basically, it's the same feature, same everything, but it's just a little bit upgraded from their 1580 model. So they haven't had the packaging updated yet. So it says 1580. However, inside is the 1585, which is pretty cool that I'm getting one of the first ones uh, before it's actually officially released. Anywho, I figured since I have this, I'd bring you all in. We'd unbox it together. Go through building it, because I've never built one. I built the 1520, but I've never built the 1580 or 1585. So it'll be a cool little, uh, little build. Why don't you come in? Let's open this up. And here we are. Here is the box nice up and close. It says 1580, but I know it's a 1585. Here's all the specs about it. If you're curious about them, you can read them. But I want to get this thing opened. So let's get cracking. Got the seal. And let's get this thing rocking and rolling. In fact, I probably need to give you a little bit more room here. <clears throat> oh man oh man all right so just like the 1520 it is well packed out with this amazing foam that has all these little components every little pocket is like a nice little present we have the little uh, instruction book here about how to build and how to set it up so we'll look at that in a little bit and now i'm just like the last one i'm going to go into each pocket and pull out whatever i find in there so we'll go to this first pocket here we have a nice USB cable. 
We have a whole bunch of hardware, parts, Allen keys, hinges, washers, zip ties, even optional parts here. If you can see that, that is freaking tons of hardware here. That's really cool. All right, anything else in that compartment? No. So let's go into this next compartment here. Looks like we have a motor mount for a larger motor. And I'm going to bet you, oh, no, I was wrong. This is the base. This looks familiar. This looks like a very similar base to the 1520. Let's go in here next. Uh, don't know. Another bracket of some form. Go in here. What the heck is this? It's heavy. Oh, it's the calibration weight. That's really cool. So you can calibrate it. Nice. Okay. Um, that one's done. That one's done. 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 All right, let's go here. This is the board that's going to be in here. We'll unbag that in a little bit. We got um, the wires for your power as well as your RPM probes. Okay, go here. No, that was that. Okay, go here. We have a load cell. And a load cell. And a load cell. And this is what makes this different from the other one is that there's three load cells that are going to be me taking measurements versus just the one on the 1520. And then here we got another bracket. I think this is for doing the calibration with the calibration weight. And I think that's it. Let me just double check. Yep, that is it. Okay. So we have all the parts out of the box. So now let's just take a quick look at the uh, board for it while we're, uh, while we're here and all set up. Wow. All right, again, very high quality look, very professional looking. I love how they put this foam on the pin so nothing gets bent or damaged in shipping. That's great. Very, very, very awesome. So there you go. Very cool looking, very impressed. Okay, lots of parts. All right, so one thing I actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here. What I like to do when I'm building something is I like to sort my parts. I like to put them in little piles so I can see what I got. Wow, I'm impressed actually. Why am I impressed? When was the last time you ever got Allen keys with a product that are the kind with the ball tips? I mean, come on. You never they're usually the cheapo kind. They're never the kind with the little ball end so that you can do like that off center. You know, these are like you want to save these and put these in your toolbox. Crazy. Okay. Some hinges, put those there. See here, so let's do some similar sized screws. All right, so I've now sorted my stuff. Let's go through our packing list and make sure we got the manual to my hand. The board is over here. The calibration bar we have, the weight we have, the black knobs are already installed. Motor mounting part one. Lower, upper, I'm sure we got those. Got a power cable, got the load cell, two of the two kilogram, one of the five kilogram, two hinges, 10 tie wraps, three hex keys, washers to install motors. Those are here for a optional USB cable. We got that. We got the RPM probes, one plus one extra. We have spacers, two. No, these are the spacers here. Two spacers. We have two washers. Looks like I got four, though. 
We have uh, the 5 millimeter M4s, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I only got 8. No, oh, 12 in here is 8. Hope I only need 8. Oh, there's 4 already installed. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be 12. We have 4 of these. I only see 3. But perhaps one's installed somewhere else already. Did I screw this up? Ah, found it. Okay. I mislined up my stuff. Okay, we have four of these screws, which are the 12 millimeter M uh, M4s, and six of the M5 12 millimeter. So we are now good. Now let's start building. All right, so we take two of these and we attach our load cell and we're gonna put it so the wires face out. So it'd be like this. Oh, it's going the wrong way. So excited. Okay, like this. I'm right-handed. I need to do it with my right hand. Okay, and let's give that a snug down. Okay, step one done. So step two, and now I'm taking two of the M5, right? This was M4. This says M5, so that's this is an M5. Okay, let's give that a snug down. Make sure my wires are not caught on anything. And now I put my two kilogram load cells with the wires pointing inside for both load cells. And it says, do not tighten yet for the screws that hold these. So we will just hand tighten these ones. Attach hinges to motor mounting part. So this is the motor mounting part here. And we're using the M4 by five, the little guys. One thing I gotta say that I really love about this product is how it all just goes together. Like all the holes are already tapped with threads. So it's really just, you're just screwing these screws right in. You don't have to worry about nuts and washers and stuff. I mean, there's a couple little washers here, but you know, you can put some things together and it's like, you got to find a nut and a bolt and, a, and a everything and you put it through. This is just really well made, well designed. Ah, maybe this is why they include the ball head version because to tighten, that's not even the right one. I think this one. You're a little off center coming in for these ones. So the ball he head helps when doing that tightening. There we go. Looks just like the picture. Assemble data acquisition board motor mounting part and lower structure port part. All right, so it's showing to go something like this, I guess, going in here. 
like that, I think. One of these, and then one of these, and that goes through here, and then one of these, and then that screws into here. The same thing again. That and that, and one of these. And now we put on our motor mount and it says again, do not tighten. So I'm just gonna leave them nice and loose. Okay. This is intense. All right. Position two kilogram load cells parallel to each other and tighten. Ah, so what they're looking for is they just want to make sure that this isn't like or brant. So that's why we weren't really tightening them. We wanted to make sure that everything was straight to itself. Say so that looks pretty darn good right there. And now we get to tighten. Ah, there's a problem. It shifts when you tighten it, though. So you gotta, like, keep it straight while tightening it. There we go. And once you get one half tightened down, the others should follow easily. What's this one? Okay, looking good. And now we have connect in the following order, the load cells, the power cables, and the USB. So the load cell connector orientation is not important. So the load cells attach down underneath here. You can see, basically, we're trying to get all in here for these three load cells. And it says orientation is not important, so I'm not going to be worrying about orientation. All right, so there you go. Now you can see I got the three load cells attached up there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rig this up the same way I rigged up my 1520, where I'm going to put a uh, XT60 connector uh, in the middle so that I can uh, plug and unplug from the board. So I will be right back as I go put together an XT60 connector. All right, so I got my little XT60 connector I put on my wire. I also had a pigtail with another XT60 male end to put on the other end of this, and I am all set up. So let's attach this as such. So we're gonna be putting our ground to the ground, and we're gonna be putting our hot wire to our hot wire. There we go. And then we're gonna gather these up and zip tie them to the sides as shown here and here. So that all these wires are nice and out of the way. Okay, that is looking very professional and very nice and neat. Okay, we'll skip software installation for now because I already have the software installed from my previous edition and now let's install our ESC and all that fun stuff. So I do have to disconnect this USB for a moment because I have to adjust these screws to attach my ESC connection. That's gonna go right here on top. Okay, and 
and negative to negative, positive to positive. Let's just make sure my wires are all nice and neat and there's no little little frays coming off on them. Okay. So I have my ESC connection there. And so since I've been using the 1520, I've since changed the ESC I'm using. I'm now using a smaller ESC. This is a uh, fly color 50 amp ESC. It's just more what I'm familiar with than the big one that I was using initially. And this seems to work better. I'm having actually better results, even though it's a smaller ESC. So I just took that whole assembly off of my other um, thrust stand. And now we're going to install it over here. So this would attach like this. So we're gonna hook up our signal wire onto the ESC point like such. And then we have our motor that we're gonna test. And we have this, but I think we have to calibrate without a motor on it first, if I'm gonna bet. So that'll have to be once I mount this onto a board. Pretty much from this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through, I'm going to clip off all these little zip ties here. I'm going to clean this all up a little bit. I'm going to probably have to either go buy some uh, wood or see if I have another piece of spare board that I can mount this to. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to wire in um, my little block here, maybe put it like here or something so that I have a way to easily attach my wires. And then I have my, uh, the ESC is already hooked up. I have my little wire for my probe, which is going to go right here. And then I just have to attach these wires to the um, my connection block here as well. Okay, so we got everything all attached. We have my ESC set up. We have the ESC getting power from the board. We have my little junction box here so that I can easily attach and detach motors. And this one seems to have detached itself. So that's really quick. Before I forget and wonder why my motor's not moving, let's put that one back on. All right, we got this all built up. It is looking good. I got my ESC hooked up. I have my XT60 connector put on here. I got it on a nice piece of wood, which is actually the same piece of wood that I used for my 1520 module. The base is the same base. The holes lined up perfectly. So I said, let me just use that for now. So I didn't have to go looking for extra wood. Now, let me save you a little bit of time and effort in that when you build this initially, don't put the motor on right away because you're going to have to calibrate it. The 1520, the, the load sensors come calibrated from the manufacturer. This little sticker on it gives you a code. You punch that code into the software and it knows what it's doing. These load sensors, on the other hand, you have to calibrate yourself because the way that it is configured. And in order to calibrate this load cell, which is the one that's going to be measuring thrust, you have to mount it vertically. I use the chair leg uh, to hold it up. And then you have to take the 200 gram little weight that they give you and put it right where your motor is. The concept is step one, it measures everything. And then step two, you put the weight on there and it measures everything plus the weight. And then it says that amount of change is 200 grams. And that's how it knows how to calibrate it. However, if you have a motor sitting here, you can't put the weight where it needs to go. So don't mount your motor right away until you at least do that calibration for the thrust. The next step is then you got to calibrate the two load sensors that are here and here for the torque. And in order to do that, you have to put on this little arm. So this screw is on. I'm just going to kind of shove it on there just temporarily, but it gets mounted on, you know, rig rigidly. And then on the top here, there's two spots where you can put a, the weight. You can put it here or you can put it over here. So what you do is step one is measure it with nothing, just as is with the arm. Step two, you put the weight on the top here, but you want to line it up so it's nestled between those two little screws. So it basically can only be in one place and measure that. And then step three is you put it out here on the end of the arm like that. Wants to move. There we go. Like that. And now it measures the weight with 200 grams out here. 
And essentially from those three calculations, it knows here's zero, here's 200 grams with no torque, and here's 200 grams with whatever torque that that fixed length is that they've, you know, set up as being part of the calibration. And from that point, then it becomes calibrated. Now they do recommend that if you change anything, you move any wires, you change the motor, you change, whenever you change anything, you probably should redo the, uh, the torque version just because the weights may have changed, the wires may have changed, things may have gotten different, you may have whatever. So they recommend that you redo the torque one every time that you've changed something. And I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, it works great. I run it through a couple of tests just to like get a feel for it. And I mean, this thing captures a lot of data. It captures the torque, it captures um, the speeds, the RPMs, the thrust. It, it's, it's, it's crazy how much data this thing captures. So I'm really excited to start putting this into use. I feel like this is really going to be a great, it's gonna be a lot of work this project, but I feel like it's going to have a lot of useful information for you guys because essentially, I'll have a bunch of props and some motors to test. And ultimately, you'll be able to say, hey, with this motor and what should what prop should I use? Or I want to run this prop, what motor should I use? What's the best for thrust? What's the best for efficiency? And it should really kind of demystify the whole which prop, which motor, and also which ESC, because it's also going to be measuring the amp draw so you can say hey with this motor and this prop i'm pulling this many amps well now i know what esc i need it won't tell you obviously what brand you need but at least you'll know what capacity you need so you don't end up having a 30 amp draw and you put a 20 amp esc on it and then end up with a little bit of a fire so super excited love this product Go check them out. It's rcbenchmark.com. If you want to do your own thrust tests, I highly recommend them because this product is really well done, well built, well made, well engineered, and it's really just, they're a great company and there's a lot of things coming out and a lot of new things that they're doing and working on and they're they're active in the, in the hobby and they're active in helping make us have better configurations essentially. So I'm all for that. And if you haven't already and you've been through this whole video, you clearly like what you see. So why don't you hit that subscribe button? While you're at it, hit that bell icon. It makes finding the videos easier and it really just helps support the channel and we, we really need a little bit of support. So, you know, consider subscribing. All right, so as always, my name is Tronage. Fly strong.